So let's begin with the latest development, and that is the downed Russian plane that was carrying upwards of 65 prisoners of war, Ukrainian prisoners of war. Everyone in the plane was killed. This happened in the Belgorod region as they were seeking to cross the border to exchange these prisoners. Russia's foreign ministry says that uh, Ukraine knew that there, the, there were prisoners on this plane and that they had been informed that the exchange was going to take place later at that afternoon of the 24th. Ukraine says absolutely not. That is not what's happened. And it's Russia now and uh, BBC is reporting that it is Russia who risked the lives in the downed plane. Now, Andre, earlier in the, so this is the BBC report, but earlier in the day as this news was being reported in the Western mainstream media, we were actually told, and BBC actually acknowledges that Ukrainian intelligence said it had not been told to ensure safe airspace on previous occasions. But before that, in the New York Times, there was indications that Ukraine was being very close to the chest about this, not really saying much about what happened, while Russia claims and strongly asserts that Ukraine actually downed the plane. So can you give uh, viewers here some context about what happened? Why is this important? Well, um, it is important only from the uh, humanitarian point of view, but uh, you have to keep in mind constantly that Pretty much anything which comes out of the corporate media, especially from the British BS Corporation, normal people do not work there. These are people who have no integrity, no morals. And so they will report whatever is told to them and they will just, you know, what. so if um, so uh, obviously the Ukrainian side knew what was going on. They knew that uh, exchange was already settled. And as the result, what most likely what happened, they pulled in either the Iris T, but again, Iris T is basically sidewinder on the chassis, and it has the range up to 40 kilometers, or maybe they uh, Sam PT, which is the Aster uh, family uh, French uh, air defense complex. It has a much larger, longer range. It's about 100 kilometers. So the distance between Belgorod and Kharkov, well, this area is direct, and it is 70 kilometers. So there are uh, actually this old salvo was even more to the north of Kharkov, which is even closer to the border with Russia and to the Belgorod proper. So they knew it, they shut it down. They did it for the picture. And again, as I already stated, take any uh, journalist from New York Times, BBC, Dolce Vell, well, and they will, you know, just approve just about killing just anything Russian, you know. Children, people, you know, they, they don't care. So, and that was precisely the uh, reason for uh, the only thing they can do now, whatever is left of the military organization, uh, not only of Ukraine, but NATO, is to kill civilians or defenseless people. Because obviously they have huge issues militarily and for all intents and purposes, it just the matter what is happening right now, it's winding down or arranging things, how the Ukraine will be basically partitioned and whatever happens with whatever the romp. So they needed PR stunt, they got it. So they won. So here is the uh, BBC article again, because I think you're exactly right. It says, the comments by Ukraine's military intelligence earlier in the day were seen as a tacit acknowledgement that it shot the military transport plane down, although it stressed it had no reliable information of who was on board and the, and Andre I wanted your take on whether you 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 were talking about the missiles that were being used there were some rumors circulating on social media that it could have been western made weapons uh US supplied missiles uh how is this true well, yeah. could you get more details uh, yeah as i already stated it wasn't S300 
uh, obviously, as I already stated, you have to, I, I need to reiterate again, average Western or even for that matter, Russian journalists are usually nincompoops, you know, as I already stated, they in there for exercising their complexes, whatever they are from ranging from pedophilia to whatever you. And so the point is they don't understand again, the issue of range and the issue of getting the, uh, when they knew that the, and it was settled on Ukraine between Ukrainian and Russian side that their plane is flying to exchange their 65 Ukrainian POWs. It uh, the plane was shut down at around 11:30 in the morning. Russian Ministry of Defense and four in four hours reported the elimination of the first French SMTP uh, uh, air defense complex. And it went uh, officially by the statement of the Russian Defense Ministry, which tells you that most likely, it doesn't mean that it's 100%, but most likely it was French air defense complex, which did it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and what are the consequences then of, of such an attack? Because uh, obviously throughout the conflict, there have been prisoner exchanges, prisoner of war exchanges, uh, but... These attacks seem to come within the context. There was recently a, a horrific attack by Ukraine on a market in Donetsk, killing several civilians, including yeah. children. Uh, you were talking about uh, kill everything Russian. Yeah, uh, yeah. What What is the impact of this uh, for, for the future of the conflict? Because uh, uh, this seems like a, a major escalation. And yet at the same time, uh, perhaps you could talk about where this conflict is then because uh you know there's been news reports uh, that are so just all over the place uh lots of enthusiasm sometimes from the western mainstream media and also a lot of pessimism so where where are things exactly first it's not escalation uh ukraine uh, armed forces of ukraine and their curators primarily but not exclusively from washington and uh, london due to their military incompetence they were primarily uh actually uh concentrating on killing russian civilians they love doing this you have to understand that and again i'm on record and uh, i wrote about it for many years so and these are the last attempts and you know that's not escalation the escalation is happening on the ground with russia taking already parts of abdivka and uh basically uh, repelling uh, yesterday they repelled another uh, number of attacks at Preshevka, and now they're moving west russian forces so uh in this particular case whatever they come up in the western media corporate media it's all that fantasies or frustration you know so and uh, again as i already stated there are no people there none uh, take anybody from the uh, you know for example uh, uh british defense ministry they would know what is happening because they're so incompetent and so badly educated so primarily their expert environment uh, if you look at people like petraeus or Kim, who wouldn't be allowed to command, as I already often say, a battalion in Russian armed forces. And these are people who never won anything in their life. They lost all their wars. So, and they feed this, you know, they have this echo chamber, which they need to both, you know, uh, it's a sort of like, uh, how to put it, uh, when you agonize and your life is on there, uh, how to put it politely? Okay, let's put it this way. It's a Wang's army. Again, you know, Hitler on the 30th, uh, I mean, you know, on the 30th of April or the, before he committed suicide, you know, Wang's army, it just should be around, you know, Berlin just now, you know, and then we, it will relieve the, you know, the pressure and the uh, siege of the by two Russian army groups, <laughs> Red Army army groups. We know how it all ended. Hitler committed suicide. But uh, before that, as many, for example, Nazi, uh, uh, big, uh, you know, haunches, they've been deviating bet between like bipolar from the utter enthusiasm, almost, you know, what, uh, hyper excited to being completely down. And it was kind of like this uh, spring going, you know, left, right, or up and down, depending on how you look at this. And this is the first um, sign of how things are bad for now. And uh, again, as I already stated, uh, I've been on a record about this, and uh, by the time it dawned on me, sometime at the start of this counteroffensive, 
how incompetent NATO is militarily. I knew it was bad, okay? I knew it was bad, but I never could comprehend how bad it was. It's just, and so what's left? Yeah, let's blow a market. They will, They attacked kindergarten two days ago. So yeah, I mean, come on. That's what the only thing they can do. They cannot fight a real war. And now they now it's the end of the rope and they are in panic. And of course, you have to uh, uh, recall today, which is absolute another uh, sign of how bad things are. And I'm talking about actually United States asking China to interfere and uh, yeah. lean on Iran to ask Iran for who is to stop doing what they're doing, obviously understanding that this is just ridiculous. First, China doesn't have that much of... Uh, uh, the influence on Iran. Iran is not necessarily directly involved right now with Houthis because Houthis they have their own way of doing things. So, but it just tells you, indicates to you to what degree of delusion this whole blob, you know, all this, you know, uh, uh, corporate media, New York Times, CNN, and you know, and all those people in the Beltway, and of course in London. Though yeah, I don't know how to even describe this. They are just parading themselves as a circus, you know, freak show. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I saw those reports today. And this is something that's repeated over and over again throughout the conflict in Ukraine, too. How many times have we heard U.S. officials, the foreign policy establishment, the blob say, China, we need China. We are urging China to help us with Russia. They've also said this with North Korea and the DPRK. They said, we're urging China to help us with the DPRK. It's, it's, it's a constant need to, to both beg China while also, of course, uh, uh, attempting a failed policy of containment. But I wanted to show you, uh, Andre, a, <laughs> the, the envoy, uh, James Kariuki of the United Kingdom, uh, if <laughs> the, the, I wanted to play this video, this was at a recent UN Security Council meeting. Mm -hmm. This is where James Kariuki, he, what he had to say about Russia. This is this is him repeating talking points from nearly two years ago. Now, here's mm -hmm. what he had to say with regard to Russia's military capabilities. Russian military modernization has been set back 18 years. Now. Russia's defense industry strips down fridges for parts. It orders its weapons from the DPRK in violation of multiple resolutions agreed in this chamber under this Russian foreign minister's instruction. Its purchase and use of Iranian drones involves both states violating the Security Council resolution. So there is James Kiryuki showing off the UK as a principal, yeah. one of the principal members of NATO, uh, his deep knowledge of Russia's military capacity. Andre, uh, could you correct the record here? Um, first, I can correct the uh, uh, basic record. I'll take Oxford, remove the humanities uh, degrees from Oxford, and just dissolve it because these are academic fraud. The fact is, again, they cannot prepare a real serious officer, you know, of the operation, good operational, let alone a uh, strategic level. And of course, they don't teach what real industry is. What they teach there primarily, including the famous London School of Economics, which produces, I mean, a huge volume of the economic ignoramuses, they don't understand what modern uh, industry is. It's very difficult. It's much easier to go and study political science. There's no such thing as political science, but it is much easier to go to study political science or literature as Boris Johnson did, you know, or being Lee Strass, who, whose knowledge of geography is, I mean, there were two, you know, five, uh, fifth grade and sixth grade kids in Russia laughing their asses off, you know, after her knowledge of geography. This is the type of the modern Western elites. And the only thing they can do is lie and confabulate stories. And the fact is, this story with the refrigerators and um, uh, kitchen appliances were originated from Germans, Christine Lambrecht, at that time, the Minister of Defense of Germany. Uh, and uh, these people, they have zero engineering technical background. They 
don't understand how basic things work, how basic late works, uh, because basically they have been grown up into those so-called elite schools which teach absolutely nothing. They go there to, uh, you know, you know, rub shoulders with the good old boys and girls. And as a result, you get those people and they are morons. And that's the whole point. And fact is, there is no actually um, objective uh, evidence that the guy who say, says this absurdity uh, has uh, is not believing it. Many of them do believe that. Take anybody from State Department in Washington or, you know, they would not know the difference between lathe and milling machine. They wouldn't understand how their signal processing is done, what Fourier transformations are, you know, or how the signal processing radar or uh, sonar of the submarines is. And so, yeah, they believe this that, yeah, Russians are, uh, I don't know if you saw this meme, I actually posted it in my blog with the huge, you know, shop with the Russian uh, poor recruits from the Russian army disassembling washing machines. So I have it. It's wonderful. It's uh, excellent. So uh, this is beyond ridiculous. Again, it's a total degeneration and implosion of the Western political class. They are not good to mow the lawn at my, in the front of my house. That's, that's the result of the fight. By the way, you know, yesterday, Harvard already withdrew what? Six uh, 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 scientific papers which have been absolutely faked on the cancer research. Hello, in the news, all over the place. They fake cancer research. Hello. Yeah, what else? So that is why nothing works in the West anymore. Yeah, and and you would think that this would just the, this would be contradictory because it feels as though you said it uh, earlier that this thing is this is over that Ukraine really has nothing left. So then what compels uh, given that the UK, the United States, NATO have been talking about this Zelensky peace plan and uh, uh, perhaps it's time to wind things down. What compels them then to uh, first of all support such actions like the downing of this jet in Russian territory and uh, going to the UN Security Council to uh, essentially spread, as you say, confabulations like complete lies and, and, and propaganda. I mean, it's it, it seriously is just propaganda. So what, what compels this if it really runs contradictory to NATO's interests at this point or does it? Well, you have to understand that primarily most of those elites, including this uh, uh, be them from Great Britain or be them from the United States, most of them are highly uncultured people. They haven't been subjected to the realities of life. And that's where the culture de derives from. They are highly uncultured. They are whiteboard theorists at best. Uh, and uh, what compels them, you know, uh, first, ambition. For, from the American side, it compels them is obviously uh, elections. They do not want the repetition of Afghanistan squared or cubed. And this is what actually defeat of the best ever American proxy is. And now, once they got involved almost directly, when they so basically sustained this humiliation of the both fighting doctrine, which is visible on the part of the, for example, Pentagon, uh, they don't know how to do strategy. They understand that something is horrible happening. So they need to do what they, they are on one trick ponies. That's what I'm saying. They're very uncultured people. The fact that they know how to behave in some, uh, you know, exclusive club and they can, uh, you know, differentiate between the 12 or and 20 year old scotch. It's not a culture. It's just basically shallow, you know, a shell of their, uh, how to put it, presentability. In reality, those people don't know much. So, and when you look at this, including the degeneration of the education in the United States, let alone in Britain, uh, I mean, what can I say? Plus, of course, when you look at the British side, they uh, probably begin to, they have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, pain from the fact maybe to feeling that they, they're, you know, pipsqueaks. Militarily, they're inconsequential. Economically, they are uh, Russia just dwarfs them. So, and yeah, and they cannot even find the proper uh, officer to command their very small uh, uh, submarine forces. They go and do the public announcements and, you know, uh, uh, do their, you know, all those things in newspapers, you know, and saying, hey, we need somebody to command our submarine forces. 
This is humiliation. And they cannot take it, again, precisely because they are uncultured. They don't have class, and so they have to invent things. They project constantly. They behave themselves as clowns. And as a result, we see what we see. For a normal person who has a, any kind of the intellect, uh, it seems absolutely bizarre. It's just headless chicken running around, you know, before being put, you know, finally, and into the soup. So there you go. Yeah, I mean, it feels like the, you, the conflict in Ukraine is kind of like the soup being stirred, so to speak, because it, it's just a, a really horrific situation. Andre, what, what is happening on the battlefield? Because as you said earlier, the downing of this jet, the killing of Russian civilians in Donetsk and in other areas of uh, Russian territory, all of it does appear to be a distraction from what's actually happening on the front lines and Russia's actual status there. So, so what is actually going on and, and where do you see it going? Well, they um, throw, uh, again, you have to understand at this stage, Ukraine is totally incapable uh, of conducting any kind of serious offensive operations. They can attack, for example, that's the other thing, you know, the... Uh, people do not understand the difference between offensive operations and the attack, you know, and um, it's a long story to explain it to it because, but you can bet your, you know, uh, whatever that uh, average uh, journal, journal anyway in the world doesn't understand the difference between attack, which is a maneuver, and the uh, uh, offensive operations. An operation in itself, it just means that it's something above the divisional level. But what they do, they do attacks. What is called the meat storms, they throw those tanks, whatever is left, and those uh, pumped with drugs uh, infantry, like in Klesheivka. They did it yesterday, I believe, six times, all repelled with the horrendous losses for them, 10 tanks blown up. So, yeah, they can do here and there some movement. And uh, but that's about it. The only thing they can do, and everybody talks about, including the this Pentagon people who say, Oh, yeah, you have to go and now sit into defensive. Well, the dudes, you know, they better start learning what defensive is because United States has no uh, experience with defensive, uh, like at all. I mean, the last time United States was on any defensive was in Korea, and the only the real defensive operation they fought was in the, of course, the Ardan Forest during the Battle of the Bulge. So you have these guys who didn't study the war for 70 years, and they come up and say, oh, yeah, do their defense. They had defensive lines erected for the last nine years there. And now they've been being penetrated, and they have the crumbling like it was the case with Avdiivka. Uh, so, you know, what can I say? Yeah, it's just slaughter. It's a slaughter. They slaughter them. It's horrendous. And but it is what it is, nothing could be done. But don't forget, and I many people do not recognize this, but you have to understand officially, we know that is around officially plus minus uh, 500,000 killed, KIAs alone in armed forces of Ukraine. Then there is uh, hundreds, there are hundreds of thousands, if not more, maimed absolutely disfigured and, you know, basically broken for life uh, veterans. The real number, again, it, it's much higher, okay? We're not going to go there for now. So what do you think? How many people in Ukraine right now, especially those who lost, you know, their limbs, those who lost their uh, health, those who lost their friends, uh, begin to understand and would want to settle accounts with those who are really behind it. Mm, you know what? I, I'll give you uh, uh, basically a hint. And FBI, for example, here better start thinking about it too, because there will be many disgruntled and disillusioned Ukrainian veterans coming back for revenge. And they will know who are the main orders of this slaughter, which is the largest uh, European war since the World War II. Right. And those who do not understand the complexity of this situation are, well, they are they're morons. They graduated, I believe, you know. They, people who have no clue about anything. So, and this is the factor which has to be considered very seriously. And 
now we have uh, open confirmation that the huge number of weapons is being circulated around Europe, of course, sold. And even Sergei Lavrov two days ago state, stated, on the dark net, you can buy pretty much anything up to, you know, anti-tank missiles. Well, guess what? I heard uh, France has issues with their, you know, Arab population and, you know, African population. Well, guess what? Uh, most of the uh, uh, fr French police wouldn't dare to go to Ban Liu nowadays because they will get, you know, just beaten the crap out of them, them or killed, you know. So, well, guess what? We have to figure out where these weapons will end up. And among them, of course, stingers and among them javelins. And I'm not talking about small arms. And you can literally buy it on the dark net per Sergei Lavrov. Uh, so these guys, they didn't know what they started because they're, they're stupid. Okay, let's place it here. As I already stated, their degree from Harvard or Yale on political science or law has to be disqualifying factor from uh, providing any serious analysis on their, you know, uh, on, well, pretty soon U.S. military academies will have the same, <laughs> you know, standing. But we are talking about the fact that people do not understand what the consequences of this are. Russians understood, but now it is all, you know, personal. So uh, uh, Russians killed those um, French uh, mercenaries, wink, wink, you know. And uh, so then the next uh, few days, some people from France, again, cadre officers came to get the bodies. Russians wrecked them again. So and this is now personal, you know, so it's and that's not going to end up well for Europe. It's already didn't end up well for them. I mean, it's pretty much done for you. Thank you for tuning in to my latest video. I appreciate all of your support. This channel, however, needs your help. I am seeking to make this channel more sustainable in the long term and upgrade necessary equipment to ensure that this work continues onward and makes progress to give you all of the geopolitical analysis that you all deserve. For that reason, I'm asking you to become a member of my Patreon community at patreon.com slash Danny Haifong. You can find that link in the video description or in the pinned comment below. For whatever amount you choose to give, just know you are supporting independent media that you can't find anywhere else. Thank you so much, and I look forward to the next video. Thank you.